And we've just gotten a response to the allegations from the Chinese foreign ministry in Beijing, a spokeswoman saying China firmly opposes such acts, and she adds the U.S. has been conducting unlawful hacking against foreign governments and businesses in an organized manner. CGTN current affairs commentator Einar Tangent is joining us now from Beijing. <clears throat> Einar, we have uh, action and reaction. Give me your take. Well, Mike, it's, it's very difficult. What we have is, a, it, on the surface, a very detailed indictment of these two officers. There's a lot of uh, kind of added detail, but no actual proof. And given that these two individuals are in China and there's no extradition treaty, uh, it's very unlikely that they will ever be in a court. Therefore, when you're making an indictment, you have a lot of leeway to kind of add things on whether or not you can prove them or not. Um, many people, I think, are looking at this as just an added lever in the political um, economic dispute between China and the U.S., and it's very doubtful that uh, this is going to actually help things. I, I think Donald Trump uh, believes that, you know, applying this kind of political pressure is, I mean, the timing of this is just a little bit too much to take, even given uh, the assurance was by the Justice Department that they're acting on their own timetable. Yeah, and then given the complicated relationship between these two countries and, and all the, this dynamic the way it's been, what does that do to it? Well, it certainly doesn't help matters. Uh, I, I think Trump was trying to figure out how to get the allies on his side. He wasn't succeeding with his unilateral tariffs. So I think he, he decided that you know, we, we have to have a threat and uh, exposing and uh, saying that China was involved in all this hacking without having, having to actually prove it uh, was one of the ways to do it. Obviously, there's been a large uh, support uh, by many countries throughout the uh, world saying, well, if this is true, then you know, we, we need to take some action. We need to condemn China. Um, like I said, unfortunately, the, the whole basis of this will never actually be proved. Uh, there's no indication exactly how this information was used. Uh, you'd think in an indictment of this type that they would say, well, ex you know, this company and this uh, technology was stolen, it was used in this way. Uh, that would be pretty dispositive, um, unless, of course, the Chinese had uh, d developed it themselves in some sort of workaround. So, you know, given the fact that uh, espionage seems to be the uh, uh, very widespread, and the U.S. is probably better at it than most, and that there are ongoing uh, disputes uh, in technology between existing companies. Just think of Qualcomm, Intel, and uh, Apple, uh, as we speak, are engaged in a kind of free-for-all. Um, you know, these allegations, it's, as I said, it's, there's a lot of detail, but no substance as of yet. And if you take things in total, uh, the tariffs, the arrest of the Huawei executive, and now this, some are saying that this, uh, the Washington Post, in fact, uh, describing it as the Trump administration's broadest anti-China initiative to date. Um, is that how it's going to be viewed in China, and is this the new normal? Well, I think it's uh, normal for Trump. His tactics are perhaps uh, different from uh, others who would be in his position. Uh, I mean, uh, firing people by tweets, uh, changing your mind, uh, and letting basically no one know about what you're going to do seems to be his hallmark. A lot of people think that this is, uh, makes him uh, very credible and kind of outside Washington. Other people believe that, and I, I think it's uh, regarded worldwide, that he's just unreliable and unpredictable. Yeah. Einer Tangent joining us from Beijing. Thanks so much.